All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to go over all four of the 2020 challenger decks so you can have an idea of which deck fits your playstyle. The idea here is just to give you a brief overview, but if you want the full deck list, I will leave a link to the announcement page in the description below. I'll also leave Amazon links for the decks if you're interested in that, but I highly suggest buying them from your local game store because these are basically the pinnacle LGS product. So do that. So let's start with Cavalcade Charge. I figure this is the best deck to start with because it's a mono red aggro deck and if that's your thing then chances are you are far too impatient to wait any longer to see the deck. Am I right? So the idea is simple. Go fast. It has cards like Fervent Champion, 10 Street Dodger, and Scorch Spitter, which all go very fast. The Champion and the Dodger each have haste, so they can sometimes start dealing damage before the opponent has even taken a turn, and the Champions can also pump themselves into two twos if you draw them in multiples, so that's pretty cool. Plus they have First Strike, which could be very relevant during the first couple turns. And then the Scorch Spitter deals a damage when it attacks, so it's basically a two power creature for one mana. It also has Runaway Steamkin and Bone Crusher Giant, so it can actually dish out some beats. The Steamkin gets a plus one plus one counter whenever you play a red spell, and it can get up to a four four for two mana, and the Bone Crusher Giant can burn off a blocker and then be cast for three, and it's a 4-3 that shocks the opponent if they target it, which is great for an aggro deck. When you have a 4 power creature for 3 mana that already burned off another creature, and then also is going to shock the opponent and deal damage to the opponent when you're an aggro deck, pretty good. Very good actually. And then the deck has a couple of payoffs. The first is the deck's namesake, Cavalcade of Calamity, which deals 1 point of damage whenever we attack with a 1 power creature, like all those creatures we saw on the first screen. These stakes are already super aggressive, and then adding an extra point of damage can make them downright deadly, especially in the late game once your opponent starts getting blockers on the battlefield. Having this to deal those last points of damage that they can can't do anything about is pretty cool. But it's even better with Torbrun. He says that whenever a red source deals damage, it deals an additional two points of damage. And yes, that will count for the Cavalcade. So if you attack with, let's just say a Scorch Spitter, for example, the Scorch Spitter deals one damage by itself, which goes to three. Then the Cavalcade deals one damage, which also goes to three. And then the Scorch Spitter will deal its combat damage, which will be boosted up to three damage. So suddenly our little one drop is attacking for nine damage. That's also gonna work for all of your attackers, just all of your damage suddenly becoming very deadly right at the point when your opponent is on the edge of losing the game. So yeah, if you like to go fast and end games as quickly as possible, as well as having the ability to dish out tons of damage in one fell swoop, Cavalcade Charge might be the deck for you. Next on our list is Final Adventure, which is basically the grindy, value-oriented green-black midrange deck of the bunch. It generates value primarily with Edgewall, Innkeeper, and Lucky Clover. The Innkeeper says whenever we play a creature that has an adventure, we draw a card. Lucky Clover, on the other hand, doubles adventure effects. So the idea is simple. Whenever we do adventure stuff, we get value. Lots and lots of value. So naturally, we're playing creatures that have adventures, like Murderous Rider, Lovestruck Beast, and Order of Midnight. So what's great about all these cards is that they already generate value just by having adventures, right? You have two effects on one card. But then you combine that with Lucky Clover and Edgewall in keeper and the value is just out of the park. It's crazy. Take Murder's Rider for example. If we cast Swift End with Lucky Clover, we get to kill two creatures with one card. And then we can cast it and if we have the Innkeeper, we get to draw a card. Plus we get the 2-3 Life Flinker. So we get to kill two creatures, get a 2-3 Life Flink, and draw a card with just Murder's Rider. And you know with like Lovestruck Beast, we would get two 1-1s one -ones, and then we'd get the 5-5 five -five for a 3 and we'd draw a card. And with Order of Midnight, it allows us to return two adventure creatures from our graveyard, technically to any creatures, but if you turn two adventure creatures, then those adventure creatures are going to start generating value. And it's just crazy, right? You see the value. There's so much value. This is the grindy value deck for sure. It's all about just doubling and tripling effects and trying to two for one or 
three for one your opponent and it's just very value oriented. I think I think we get that now, right? The deck also has Vraska and Find Finality, both of which are notable for being able to generate value once again and also helping control the board. Vraska can sacrifice useless permanents for more cards and she can blow up the opponent's permanents and an ultimate of course, but Find Finality can return two creature cards from your graveyard to your hand or potentially blow up the board if you're behind. So more value, more blowing stuff up. And as an added bonus, we have Midnight Reaper. Even if we sacrifice stuff to Vraska's plus one ability, we'll draw a card from Midnight Reaper. So let's say we have a, a small creature on the battlefield that's not doing much. We can sacrifice it, draw a card, then draw an extra card from Midnight Reaper. So we get two cards and that's two more potential adventure creatures to double up with more lucky clovers or innkeepers. If we draw an adventure creature and we have an innkeeper, we can play another card and then draw another card. And yeah, you get it, right? So we also have Smitten Swordmaster, which can deal X damage and gain X life based on the number of knights we control. And even though this deck isn't a knight's deck, there are 20 knights in total. Plus this effect will be multiplied by the number of lucky clovers we have. So this can be just a downright game finisher, not to mention it can put us out of reach of like aggro decks or just offset the life we may have lost from, you know, our own card drawing and stuff. So uh, pretty good, pretty good. So yeah, if you like grindy Golgari midrange decks that generate a ton of card advantage, Final Adventure might be the deck you're looking for. Next up is Flash of Ferocity, which is basically a blue control deck, but it's a blue control deck that gets to beat down with beefy green creatures that it plays at instant speed. So let's cut to the chase. The deck plays Sinister Sabotage, Quench, and Thassa's Intervention, which will probably immediately tell you whether or not you want to play this deck because they're counter spells. And that's what this deck really likes to do. It's the quintessential Island Go deck, right? You play your land and you do nothing on your turn. But what's so unique about this deck is it plays a lot of creatures, way more creatures than you would expect a control deck to play. And that's because it plays creatures with flash like Brineborn Cutthroat, Brazen Borrower, and Night Pack Ambusher. So yeah, all of these creatures have flash, which allows you to always hold up your counter spells every single turn and play these at the end of your opponent's turn. Meaning there's never a time that you need to tap out in order to play a threat. You always have all of your mana available to counter spells and then you get to play three power flyers and four fours at the end of your opponent's turn, which is practically not fair. So the cutthroat will get a plus one plus one counter every time you play something on your opponent's turn, which is basically everything in the deck. You're always going to be playing everything on your opponent's turn. So plus one plus one counter basically whenever you play anything. The borrower gives you more disruption because the adventure allows you to bounce a permanent and it's a three mana three power flyer so it's a threat and the ambusher is an absolute machine because it's a four mana four four with flash so once again you can play it at the end of the opponent's turn or remember you can flash it in as a blocker i mean a four four insta speed creature is pretty good just to flash in during combat and kill an attacker but the best part is you get a two two token every time you go your entire turn without playing anything and remember what this deck does or rather what it doesn't do it doesn't play stuff on its own turn so basically you get a 2-2 token every single turn and it's going to be a 3-3 token as long as you control the ambusher because the ambusher gives plus one plus one to all wolves so basically you get a four mana four four insta speed blocker or just the beater that's going to start producing tokens every turn it's a very serious game finisher especially when you take into consideration that you're going to be leaving up all your mana for counter spells so your opponent's going to have a hard time interacting with it so you get the idea right counter spells and instant speed creatures and the deck then bridges the gap between these two strategies perfectly with frilled mystic it's a four mana three two that can be flashed in to counter a spell and if i could summarize this deck with wood card this is it an insta speed creature that counter spells this is a perfect representation of what this deck is if you're looking at field mystic and thinking this card looks really cool then this deck's for you because this is what this deck's all about there is one card literally just one card in the entire deck that you have to play on your own turn and that's the hippocamp it's pretty good though it'll let you draw a card whenever you cast a spell on your opponent's turn which should be most turns so a card that lets you draw cards when you're countering all of your opponent's spells is pretty good so yeah if you you like to literally play all of your games of magic on your opponent's turn if you're of the island go mentality then flash of ferocity 
is the deck you're looking for. The final deck in the series is Allied Fires, and it's basically a tribal planeswalker deck for lack of a better description. It plays planeswalkers, a lot of planeswalkers, Sarkin, Ugin, Kasmina, Narset, and Sahili to be precise. We're not going to go over all of them right this second, but planeswalkers, right? You get planeswalkers. But what makes the deck so unique is how it tries to cast them, which is to say, for free, because the deck plays Fires of Invention. It says that you can't cast spells on your opponent's turn and you can't cast more than two spells per turn but you can cast those two spells for free as long as you have enough lands to cast them normally. So basically if you have five lands you can cast anything that costs five or less for free and you can do that twice per turn. So the idea is to get Fires of Invention in and then you get to cast two Planeswalkers per turn for free. That's the idea. Now we can look at the Planeswalkers. So Sahili pumps out 1-1 one, one tokens every time we play a non-creature spell, including all of our other Planeswalkers, which aren't creatures. So yeah, 1-1 one, one token every time we play another Planeswalker. Kazmina and Ugin also both put out creature tokens. You see what's happening, right? We're playing Planeswalkers that produce creature tokens. So yeah, they both produce tokens. Kasmina also protects our Planeswalkers by making them more expensive to target, and Ugin can blow up permanents with his minus ability. So we have some control here, as well as some taxing. And then Sark Sarkon also creates tokens and he'll start dealing damage to attackers based on the number of those dragon tokens you control. And then finally Narset is the only planeswalker that doesn't produce tokens but she allows us to dig for more planeswalkers that can then produce tokens. So if we're running out of cards we play Narset then we get to dig several cards deep pick another planeswalker play that one for free and then have that one start producing tokens. So now it makes sense right? Fires of Invention, free planeswalkers, and lots of creature tokens. As well as just lots of value right? Planeswalkers are great at generating value by you know being able to do an effect every single turn. Now of course the danger of this sort of deck if you play with planeswalkers regularly you know the danger of planeswalkers especially a lot of planeswalkers is attackers. The opponent has too many creatures your planeswalkers just die before they can really do anything so the deck has deafening clarion and time wipe to clear the board. So you have ways to protect your planeswalkers as well as just ways to survive the early game against aggro decks which is pretty great. And the deck has another payoff for playing Fires of Invention with Kenrith. What's fascinating about this deck is we don't actually use our mana to cast spells, right? With Fires of Invention in play, we cast them for free and our mana just sits there untapped. Meaning that when we play Kenrith for free, all of our mana is open to activate his abilities. One of the more important ones being the red one. It can give Kenrith and all of our tokens from our Planeswalkers haste, allowing us to surprise our opponent with a ton of damage they weren't expecting. He can also dig for more cards. His blue ability allows us to draw cards. So we play him for free and then we use our mana that we're not using for anything else anyway to draw cards to get to potentially more planeswalkers. And we could gain a bazillion life with the white ability. Five life for every three mana is pretty brutal so that allows this deck to survive. Assuming the opponent can even attack into Kenrith in the first place. Oh and as an added bonus the deck also has Fey of Wishes allowing the deck to go digging through its own sideboard for specific answers like removal or planeswalkers with relevant abilities and all kinds of stuff. And remember that Fires allows you to cast the adventure for free, grab anything from your sideboard, and then cast that for free as your second spell. That's pretty good if you desperately need something from your sideboard. So if you like Planeswalkers, and especially if you like, you know, some slightly janky decks, Allied Fires might be right up your alley. So there you go. Those are all four Challenger decks for 2020. Cavalcade Charge, Final Adventure, Flash of Ferocity, and Allied Fires. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, you can support me on my super secret Patreon that I never mention in any videos ever except this one. You can also find my Amazon affiliate link in the description below. After clicking any Amazon link on this channel, even if you don't buy the thing that I link to, if you buy anything within that session, it'll give me a small commission and it doesn't cost you any extra so it's a free way to support this channel if you're already ordering through Amazon. Anyway, I recommend local game stores for magic products but literally anything on Amazon that you buy after clicking a link. It's just literally a free way to chip a quarter to me if you want. Also, I will absolutely be doing upgrade guides for these. I know someone 
going to ask. Yes, I will be doing upgrade guides for these. I will wait until the prices settle down a bit, but expect those in the very near future. But in the meantime, thanks for watching everyone, and I will see you in the next one.